this week, we're at the Ironman European Championships in Frankfurt, Germany. A look at the duel between Andreas Reilert and Marina van Hunecker, the two fastest Ironman athletes in history. And talk to Norman Stadler about his first victory at the World Championships in Hawaii in 2004. It's the 11th edition of the Ironman European Championships in Frankfurt, Germany, the most prestigious Ironman race in Europe. Situated on the River Main, Frankfurt is Germany's finance and banking center. But Mainhattan isn't just known for its skyline, but also for its historic old town around the Römerberg, the place where Germany once crowned its kings and where the Ironman athletes crossed the finish line. Around the corner from the stunning Römer building and the Kaiserdom is also the Goethe House, the place where Germany's most famous poet, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, was born. The two fastest Ironman athletes in history, Andreas Reilert from Germany and Belgium's Marina van Hunneke, face each other at the European Championships. It's the battle of the two European giants and 2010 European champion Andreas Reilert, who holds the Iron Distance world record of 7.41.33, knows it's going to be a tough race. You can't just do the race like this, but it needs to be a long preparation. You try to focus and visualize beforehand, so you do training units where you push yourself to the limit. Exactly in those moments, I imagine that this is the moment where I'll reach my limit in a race as well. For me, it's the, the first and, and one of the, uh, the two biggest uh, goals of the season. It's this and then Hawaii. Um, so that means that Everything that came before in 2012 was not a test, but it was uh, it were building steps uh, or blocks up to this race. Marino is not just the top. Marino isn't just a top favorite on paper, but he's got everything that makes a world-class athlete. Marino's strength is that he almost hasn't got any weaknesses. I can uh, smash this ball back to to Andy. It's, he's a, a really tough guy on the mental part. Uh, he thinks a lot. I think he's a smart guy. I, w I would compare him in a certain way almost to, to Maka. He says not too much, he listens a lot, where Maka says more and listens less. Frankfurt. With the chance of winning the European Championships, the expectations for Frankfurt are very high. It's a big challenge to present myself in front of the German crowds. But if I could repeat this moment from 2010 again in 2012, it would be sensational. In my list of, of let's say, top three uh, biggest wins, it, it could get to the second place, I would say. Uh, it's really, it, it would be the strongest field I ever beat, uh, for sure, a European title, for sure. So yeah, it's, it's really important. 2011 European champion Caroline Steffen is again the big favorite for this year's race, and the memories from last year's victory motivated the former professional swimmer and cyclist to work as hard as possible at her training base in Lausanne, Switzerland. My victory in Frankfurt last year was very important for me. The year before I got second and last year I made it my mission to win the European title and by hook or by crook I made it. I had some problems during the race but fought to the end and that victory meant a lot to me. Under the supervision of coach Brett Sutton, Stefan has arguably developed into Europe's most complete Ironman athlete and she knows exactly what she wants in Frankfurt. In 2012, I want to defend my title in Frankfurt and enjoy it a bit more than last year. It's the day before the race, and age groupers and pros alike check their bikes into transition and have a last swim in the Langener Waldsee. The talk is all about the duel between Reilert and Van Hunneke, but the two top favorites know there are others to watch. Everybody talks about a duel, but on paper I would call it a three-man's race. Uh, Kinley is for sure on the same level. He's got all the attributes you need as a winner, an irrepressible will and the ability to take strength from defeats and get back to the top. It's a pretty good situation for me that I can fly a little bit under the radar. 
because ja, under the radar you sometimes fly pretty fast. And that's exactly where I see my chance. Und genau darin sehe ich auch meine Chancen. Sebastian Kienler sees himself as the man below the radar. But the woman on everyone's radar is last year's winner, Caroline Steffen from Switzerland, who arrives at the same time for the bike check-in as Marino van Hunecke. It's a well-studied routine for the pros, but there is some confusion about what to do in transition. When can you totally pull down your wetsuit? In the tent or in, at the boy? Discussions among pros. As the bike racks fill up and the anticipation before tomorrow's race grows, a relaxed Caroline Steffen is ready for the big day. I'm looking forward to the race tomorrow. I'm not scared because I know I've trained well and I've talked to my coach today and he said, we've done everything that we can do and tomorrow I can just try and perform. It's 5.45 in the morning at the Langener Waldseer. More than 2,800 athletes from more than 50 countries prepare for the long day ahead, and 2011 champion Caroline Steffen is ready for the defense of her title. I'm focused on my bike, that everything is ready. I've gone through the course so many times in the last few hours that I'm only focused on the start now. The men's favorites are also in transition to prepare their bikes, and the tension is clearly rising. It's an indescribable feeling, a mix of anticipation, nervousness, and a little bit of fear of the unknown. Now it's uh, getting the bike ready and, uh, and put the, the wetsuit on and then have another look at the transition and that's it, then we can go. Now you try to focus and you're in your own rhythm. You've got to make sure that you're aggressive enough at 6.45 and go into the race well prepared. The last nervous moments before the race. Athletes from across the world gather their thoughts and focus on the 226 kilometer mission that lies ahead. The start of the swim course is at the public swimming area of the Langener Waldsee. It's a two-loop swim with an Australian exit after 2.1 k, before completing the final 1.7 kilometers. The start is just a few seconds away. The field is ready and the tension is at boiling point. The 6.45 gunshot fires at the Ironman Frankfurt is underway. As the pros set the pace, the age groupers follow them through the frenzied waters of the Langener Waldsee. Apart from Germany, Mexico and Spain field the strongest contingents. At the front, Andreas Raylet leads by a few seconds ahead of Marino van Hunica. More than 2,800 swimmers in the water, it's a sight to behold. And Raylet races ahead at a speed of 1 minute 9 seconds per 100 meters. At this point of the race, there are now two distinct groups. In the lead group, Belgian age grouper Brat Kolpet, Poulain and Jurkiewicz from France, and also Raylet and van Hunica. In the second group, Caroline Steffen and Sebastian Kienle. At the Australian exit, age grouper Bart Kulpert leads ahead of Jurkiewicz, Stefan, Andreas Reilert and Clemente Alonso McKernan. It's a tight race as Van Hunneke enters the second loop 14 seconds behind the leader. American Amanda Stevens is the fastest woman out of the water with an incredible split time of 24.05, leading by more than two minutes ahead of the third place Caroline Steffen. Sebastian Kienler, a notoriously slow swimmer, enters the water for the second loop just behind Caroline Steffen and has already a lot of catching up to do. At the front of the field, Raylet stays with the lead group as he puts more time into his main rivals. One of these rivals, his German friend Sebastian Kienler, now swims right behind Caroline Steffen, proof of what a strong swimmer she is. As the first men exit the water, Poulain is in the lead with a fast time of 44 minutes 15 seconds, closely followed by Kolpert, Jurkiewicz, Raylet and Raphael. A quick change and the Germans Jan Raphael and Andreas Raylet are on the bikes first, racing ahead of the rest of the field.
Amanda Stevens keeps her lead in the swim and exits the water in a new Ironman record time of 45.04. And incredibly, she's together with men's favorite Marino van Hunica. One minute, 13 seconds behind Andreas Raylet, van Hunica has some catching up to do. In the women's race, Amanda Stevens is almost four minutes ahead of Caroline Steffen and Anja Berenek, who leaves transition together with fellow German Sebastian Kienle. Now it's time to tackle the challenging bike course. It's a two-loop, 180-kilometer bike course with 1,000 meters of climbing, of which the main attractions are a steep climb in the Bergen Enkheim, called The Beast, and the infamous Heartbreak Hill, which both provide spectator hotspots to spur the athletes on. Right from the start of the bike, the group that exited the water together stay in the lead. Raylet looks fresh and sets the pace. But at the 44-kilometer mark, Marina von Hunneke catches the leaders. The race is now wide open again. Raylet tries his best to put some space between himself and the rest of the field on the descents, but Jan Raphael stays with him. And then the weather changes. Despite the sudden torrential rain, Van Hunneke overtakes Raylet, who crashes shortly after. Now Jan Raphael is in the lead ahead of Sebastian Kienle, who's already made up all the time he lost on the swim. Marina Van Hunneke lies in third position. Andreas Rehl had lost some time because of his crash, but is already back in the chase. But in the front, Sebastian Kienle and Marina von Hunneke both overtake Jan Raphael and really pump the power through the pedals. In the meantime, Caroline Stefan has taken the lead in the women's race, with Anja Berenek trailing close in second. In the men's race, 28-year-old Sebastian Kienle proves his bike credentials and together with Van Hunneke, they have already put 3 minutes 35 seconds between themselves and third place Pulat. And then the weather changes again and the rain stops. Marino van Hunneke looks strong as he powers ahead and appears to have dropped Kienle. Germany's Anja Berenek still tries to keep up with Caroline Steffen, but the 33-year-old Swiss triathlete looks completely in control of the race. At the 159 kilometer mark on the infamous Heartbreak Hill, Marina von Hunneke is already more than a minute ahead of Kienle. But Andreas Rehlert looks a beaten man at this point, trailing more than eight minutes behind the leader von Hunneke, who has clocked an average speed of 40.54 kilometers on the 180 kilometer bike course. Entering transition, he looks in charge of the race. Will this be von Hunneke's day, or can Kienle still catch him? It looks good for the Belgian, because when he starts the marathon, he's 2.51 in front of Sebastian Kienle, and his lead over his biggest rival, Andreas Raylet, is already more than 11 minutes. When Kienle enters transition, he knows it's going to be a tough battle against Van Hunneke, but Kienle is a fighter, and the 28-year-old and his chase will be cheered on by the German crowds. As Van Hunneke powers ahead on the run, his mentor, Norman Stadler, is positive about the possible outcome. It's still 42 kilometers, but I believe today is his day, our day. And if everything goes well, we can celebrate tonight. It looks like everything is going according to plan as Raylet enters transition almost 12 minutes behind Van Hunneke. Is the race over for Raylet? Caroline Steffen enters transition as leader of the women's field, two minutes, three seconds ahead of the strong German Beranek and 12.36 ahead of Yvonne van Flerken from Holland. Can Anja Beranek catch last year's winner, Caroline Steffen? And will Marina van Hunneke stay in control? Or can Kienle or even Raylet close the gap? We'll find out after the break. Welcome back to the Ironman European Championships and leader Marino van Hunneke sets the pace on the run course. The course heads along the northern embankment of the River Main, crossing over to the southern embankment where thousands of spectators support the athletes along the Shaman Kai. 
They then cross the river again to reach the famous finish line at the Römerberg. On the first loop, Van Hunneke looks at ease and keeps his rhythm. At the 17.9 kilometer mark, he leads Keenler by 2.18. Andreas Raylet trails by more than 13 minutes. For him, it will take a miracle to catch Van Hunneke. And between kilometers 17.9 and 31.2, Keenler also loses more than two minutes on the Belgian. German Jan Raphael is holding on to his third place, but Spain's Clement Alonso McKernan is on his trail. Meanwhile, Andreas Raylet looks like a beaten man, and his bike crash surely impacted negatively on his performance. He won't be able to catch Van Hunneke anymore, but the German is a proud man, and he tries his best to reduce the distance between himself and the men ahead. Caroline Steffen enjoys the atmosphere in Frankfurt and continues with her strong performance, possibly en route to a new course record. Berenek was the only woman posing a threat to Steffen, but between kilometer 3.1 and 20.8, she loses 5 minutes 20, and now she is 7.33 behind the Swiss woman. In third, Sophie Goss from Belgium. With an average speed of 3.52 per K, there's no sign of slowing down for Van Hunneke, and it looks like the Belgian will win his first Ironman European Championship. Sebastian Keenler tries his best, but knows it's going to be almost impossible to catch the Belgian. But in the battle for third place, drama ensues, and Jan Rafael is caught by Spain's Clemente Alonso McKernan, who overtakes Rafael and runs a sensational marathon. Rafael clearly struggles and needs to rehydrate himself. But now even Andreas Raylet is coming closer. The chance to win is over for him, but the man from Rostock never gives up. The finish line at the Römerberg is looming closer for the leaders. And in the women's race, it's all going according to plan for Caroline Steffen, who really enjoys her last kilometers. In second place, Germany's Anja Berenek is on course to reach her best career result. In the men's race, Van Hunneke cruises at the front and can possibly beat the course record of 7 hours, 59 minutes and 15 seconds. The crowds at the Rümerberg are waiting. Van Hunneke knows that he will win the race. What a triumph for the 35-year-old. After winning Klagenfurt six times in a row, he arrives at his first European Championships and claims the title. The 2012 European champion Marina van Hunneke with a winning time of 8 hours, 3 minutes and 31 seconds. No new course record, but van Hunneke is an exhausted yet happy winner. I, I have a new top three, I would say now. My first, first place is still world record in, uh, in Austria last year. Then for sure this one, a close second, and then my third place in Hawaii. Uh, this, is, this was a week a complete week out of my comfort zone. I'm used to my quiet lake, no stress at all, a little bit hidden from the public, and here it's, it's hectic. On entering the finish line at the Römerberg, Sebastian Kienle is also a happy man. It's not quite enough to beat Marina van Hunneke, but his second place at the European Championships is his best result in his young career. To be vice-European champion in this field is definitely a big, big result for me, and I'm super happy. Clemente Alonso McKernan claims third place, and after a long fight and overtaking Jan Rafael, a disappointed Andreas Raylet comes in fourth. Not exactly the result he wished for, but Raylet accepts the result with good grace. 
I've tried everything to come back to the lead group after I crashed. Today, I somehow had to fight more with myself than with all the others, and I think I lost the race after the crash. The official results of the 2012 Ironman European Championship. Marina van Hoenacker wins the title with Keenan in second, Alonso McKernan in third, Raylet fourth, and Raphael in fifth place. Still racing towards the finish, Caroline Steffen is on course record tempo, while Anja Beronek manages to hold second. Looking way more comfortable than in 2011, Caroline Steffen is able to truly soak up the atmosphere and enjoy her first place finish in Frankfurt. Back to back European Championship titles with a sub nine hour finish. I'm incredibly happy. It was a good time. I tried to race a safe race and I really wanted the title, but I didn't want to exceed my limits. It's really cool to race in Frankfurt, and that's why I'm here for the third time. Claiming the highlight of her Ironman career, Anja Berenek takes the silver medal. Confirming Stefan's title with Berenek in second and Karina Abram from Great Britain in third place. While the race winners enjoyed their victory, thousands of age groupers are still on the course, fighting their own battle over the 226 kilometers to finish the Ironman Frankfurt. Cheered on by the enthusiastic Frankfurt crowd, athletes from around the world momentarily forget their pain and give what's left to enjoy their triumph over the challenges and cross the finish line in Frankfurt. The first ever Ironman 70.3 Norway took place in Hagusund, the homeland of the Viking Kings. With a strong field in attendance, there were various title contenders for this half-distance Ironman. But on the 1.9-kilometer swim, a lead group with Denmark's Rasmus Henning and Philip Ospoli from the Czech Republic quickly established. On the bike course, Ospoli quickly broke away from Henning and kept his lead for the rest of the bike. Known as a strong runner, the 36-year-old extended his lead on the half marathon until the finish, celebrating his second 70.3 victory this season. Philip Ospley in first in front of Henning and Snilsfeet. In the women's race, it was between America's Mary Beth Ellis and the Dane Michelle Vesterby. But Ellis was dominant on the bike and the run and won her third 70.3 race of the year. Mary Beth Ellis wins with Vesterby in second and Collonge in third. <laughs> Hawaii is the place where Ironman legends are born. And after five unsuccessful attempts and some frustrating experiences in previous years, Germany's Norman Stadler finally had his great breakthrough in 2004 when he won his first Ironman World Championship title. I always thought that I'd go to Hawaii with my best form, knowing that I've done all my homework, and that's how it was in 2004. I said to my girlfriend back then, I think I'll win the race tomorrow. Swimming was never my strength, and I was always glad when I was near the front or in the second group. I could not be too far behind, and it wasn't too bad in 2004. And then I just played out my strength on the bike. I tried everything and took matters into my own hands and raced to the front. I could not have made it as well. And I rode a pretty bad time back then, but I was still much faster than the others. Then I got off the bike and ran the race home. Of course, it was a marathon and anything could have happened. But only Peter Reed managed to come close, up to 11 minutes, and he got second. It was my race, and I won it, with one of the biggest margins ever in Hawaii.
You think about so many things. You in Hawaii for the first time, and of course, it's everything you've ever dreamt of and you've worked for. You know the family sits at home and they go crazy, and you can hear the corks pop, and you know that you have won the Wimbledon or the Tour de France of our sport. Next week, we're at the Ironman Zurich in Switzerland. Find out if Ronnie Schilknecht can win his sixth consecutive title in Zurich. And we live Australian Chris McCormack's first victory in Hawaii in 2007.